Hello everyone, what's going on? This is a uh, spontaneous video. I was, uh, I was out taking pictures this afternoon, doing some macro stuff in the field. And it was terrible, it was very windy and very bright and I didn't see anything. But as I was driving back home, just after the sun went down, I noticed a few things. Uh, one, there's no moon, which is nice. Second thing is, there was not a wisp of cloud in the sky. Third thing is, it's Sunday night, so a lot of revelers won't be out uh, and about where I'm going. And I checked one of my computer programs that, uh, that I use for tracking the night sky and I was delighted to see that uh, the Milky Way was going to be on full display uh, at a place I like to go to to shoot the night sky. So instead of my day being over I repacked my bags and uh, I'm heading south from where I live to a a uh, usually fairly deserted place that has very little light pollution and points out over the bay that I live on. So I'm, I'm hopeful. The, um, the program that I use is called Planet. It's uh, P-L-A-N-I-T, like plan it with an exclamation mark for photographers. And I paid a couple of dollars for it. I can't remember, it was a long time ago, but it's an app. It's, you can only have it on your phone, but check it out. It's, it's great. Sorry for the uh, break in continuity there. Um, I'm, I'm being closely followed by a member of our constabulary. So I'm trying to pay attention to my uh, speed um, while this chat follows me presumably all the way to my destination but I thought on the way down here I could tell you quickly about the equipment and the camera settings if you uh, if you are like me uh, and you just do the occasional bit of uh, nighttime sky photography just for the fun of it uh, these are some basic simple rules that'll that'll help you out a great deal uh, first of all take whatever camera you've got uh, the rules for setting your your camera settings are a bit different uh, for a crop sensor and a full frame sensor uh, and I have no idea what they are for a micro four thirds you're on your own for that one but I'm taking one of each tonight um, I'm tell you, I only had two batteries fully charged so I'm taking a, um, a Nikon D850 which is my big full frame camera and I'm taking a Nikon D7500 which is uh, a pretty decent uh, crop frame camera. Now the lenses I've selected, uh, I have a, a not very great um, Nikon lens for the full frame that is at the wide end 18 uh, and it's a zoom, it zooms to 35 millimeters and so I'll be using that at 18 millimeters which isn't as wide as I'd like to go if I had a wider angle lens I would use it but my good lens is is off at the Nikon place getting some TLC so that's what I'm stuck with before I get to the settings I'll tell you what I'm using on the other camera on the crop frame the D7500 I have a um, an 11 to 16 millimeter lens that I'm using on that now Actually, the focal length, length of those two lenses are comparable uh, on the full frame and the crop frame. The difference is that that 11 to 16 is an f2.8, which is going to be uh, letting in a good bit more light, and that's the reason I'm taking that one with the crop frame camera. So, um, the other thing I have, of course, is two sturdy tripods good solid tripods. One of them's a studio tripod that has a three-way um, adjustable uh, tripod head on it. Uh, um, a, um, gosh, I can't remember who makes it, but it's great. Um, I'll tell you when I get to the place. The other one's just got a ball head on it. It's a lighter 
a travel tripod, but it'll be fine for the for the smaller camera. So um, settings. There's really just three things you need to worry about. The first one you don't need to worry about is just your aperture, whatever you can max out to. So it'll be 3.5 on my full frame camera, 2.8 on the other. Now, it gets interesting with the, uh, well, let's talk about focus before we get to shutter speed. It's very simple, focus to infinity. And um, you can just set that on your lens, turn your lens automatic focus off that needs to be off and stay off set the camera to infinity sometimes you have to set it to infinity and then back it back just a hair to bring the the stars into focus but um, uh, you know it, uh, fiddle around with that I like to set my focus before I leave the house uh, and then put a piece of tape on the focus ring so I don't nudge it uh, when I'm out. It can be hard um, at night making sure that your focus is really sharp. But uh, that, that's how you do the focus. And the piece of, um, the piece of uh, electri uh, electrician's tape that I use just stops the wheel from getting nudged. Um, so shutter speed. There's a there's a kind of basic rule that you can use. It's not really a rule, it's a good starting place. I recommend you use this thing called the rule of 500. Um, you'll read all kinds of stuff saying, no, it should be the rule of 600 and other things, but 500 is easier for me to remember. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I don't know what he is talking about. He's getting his numbers all mixed up. The rule of 500 just says this. Divide 500 by the focal length of your lens. So with a full frame camera and an 18 millimeter lens, you divide 500 by 18 and you get 28 seconds. That's the longest shutter speed you can use before you start to see star trails, lines where there are supposed to be dots. That's what that means. Um, so for the crop frame camera, uh, we also have to remember to use that conversion factor of 1.5 for Nikon, 1.6 for Canon. Uh, but that is 500 divided by 11 millimeters, which gives us 45 seconds. And if you then divide that by the uh, factor of 1.5, you come out with right at 30 seconds. Okay, so that's how you use the rule of 500 to calculate your, um, your safe shutter speeds. And um, I have a feeling that he might be getting ready to say something marginally useful about ISO. So I'll turn it back over to him. Blimey. Uh, and the only thing that leaves you to figure out is your um, ISO. And generally speaking, and it, it's always a trade-off. You know, the higher the ISO, the more sensitive your sensor will be to the dim light of the stars. But the higher the ISO, the more likely you're going to introduce a lot of noise, which doesn't look good at, on nighttime pictures. So, I recommend you start probably somewhere around uh, 16,000, 1,600, I'm sorry, if your camera will, will do that. Uh, but don't hesitate to double that to 3200 or even double it again to 6400. Um, my full frame camera has incredible low light performance and uh, I'll be able to get really pretty noise free pictures up to 64 without too much trouble. Um, and uh, yeah, that's I'll probably start at 32 and then then maybe bump it up to 4,000 and see what it looks like so that's the basic settings um, I talked about the tripod one thing I didn't mention is if your camera does this um, shoot in mirror up mode um, which is basically silent mode I think some other cameras call it and if you have a, uh, a remote control that will allow you to not touch the camera when you're doing this, use it. I have a, a corded remote for each of these cameras, so I'm not gonna touch the, the shutter button 
at all. And with the mirror up mode, what it'll do the first time you press the button is it'll raise the mirror, and the second time you uh, press the button, it'll fire the shutter. Uh, so it cuts down on any vibration you'd get from the mirror going into the up position. All right, I'm probably three or four more miles from my destination. I just hope that the vandals who usually smash the lights out in this parking lot have had a good evening of vandalism and there's no light, but um, take a flashlight with a red filter on it so that it doesn't jigger up your eyes. Because uh, I tell you, if you just having this little light on to video by in the car is gonna blind me for 15 minutes when I get there. Much better to use a, a red light and don't look right at it. Do as much of your setup as you can before you go to where you're going. And if you're lucky enough to live in a desolate remote place, good for you. If you live in a highly populated area like I do, um, or at least a moderately populated area, you're going to have light pollution. Uh, it's th there's a map you can look up that shows you um, light pollution and there's a scale I can't remember the name of it but it'll it'll tell you where you are on the scale and there's a, a certain a certain midpoint that you really don't even need to bother going out if it's much above that in your area because you won't see the Milky Way um, I should have done more more research but this was a very spontaneous spur of the moment thing. So I hope I get some nice pictures um, and I'm almost there. So I'm gonna sign off for right now and until I get to the place and, and get all set up and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, looking forward to it, see you in a bit. Well, hey there guys. I'm sorry it took me a little while to, to get back to you. I got here and the uh, conditions were just absolutely perfect. There's not a cloud in the sky. There is no moon whatsoever. Uh, most of the lights in this parking lot are, are turned off except the one that's shining in your face there. There's nobody out here. And um, you're not gonna be able to see anything of course with a 25 year old iPhone but the, the Milky Way was just uh, just absolutely stunning. It was starting at the far west horizon and going straight over my head, and I got several nice pictures. So it was a it was a real treat to get out here. I must say that I mean I'm I don't know if this will be the case when I when I get back to the computer, but out of the camera, the pictures on the crop frame with the uh, 11 millimeter lens uh, are looking a good bit sharper than with the uh, slightly dodgy 18 millimeter lens on the full frame but we'll just have to see i thought you might want to have a quick look at the at the setups it's going to be a little hard to see but that's the uh that's the d850 um atop the tripod this tripod was a lot easier at getting the really high overhead shots and um, everything set in manual and pre-focused and you'll see uh, using a uh, wired remote on a good sturdy carbon fiber tripod um, maybe just maybe you'll be able to see what some of these images look like if I can get enough well you can't because of the uh, light on the on the iPhone. But uh, anyway, let's have a quick look at the uh, other setup. It's over. It's over here. This is um, this is the uh, three-way head I was telling you about. Works well for this, except it doesn't get vertical enough for my taste. Both the cameras are on uh, an L bracket, L frame. Uh, so this is the crop frame D7500. Uh, you can see the settings there, 20 seconds uh, at f2.8 and uh, an ISO of 3200. So everything as we talked about on the way over here. Well, I'm going to shoot a few more 
uh, so I can show you what we get and uh, then I think it's time to call it a night but um, I'll talk to you one more time before uh, before I head in all right guys I am done for today it was a really really good evening out I'm so glad I came this never even crossed my mind uh, until right before I got in the car and drove over here but the conditions like I say were about as good as they're gonna get the um, the moon uh, is in is uh, non-existent right now it's a what do you call it when it's the opposite of a full moon it's an empty moon there's no moon in the sky the only problem was uh, the Milky Way or we I should say were moving fast in relation to the Milky Way and when I got here it was in perfect position uh, towards out towards the sea and there was no light pollution except the except the light in this parking lot which I obviously couldn't do anything about but the um, as, as the evening went on I mean it was really rapid it the, the our view of the Milky Way moved to the north and uh, kind of behind me um, so as it moved as the center of the Milky Way moved in relation to where I was I was having to shoot towards light there's a city right across the bay and um, while it's not very impressive when you have a 30 second shutter speed it's pretty bright so anyway I think I got lots of really good pictures I won't know till I get home and look at them and I'm not gonna do that tonight but um, first thing tomorrow I'll put this video together and I'll uh, I'll show you exactly what I was able to get I hope they worked out last time I was out here was a year ago and it looked promising but there was a there was a beacon tower that I'm looking at right now that was flashing the whole time and it ruined all of my pictures but tonight there was nothing I used the bush for some foreground interest and uh, the rest of it was just beautiful sky so anyway I'll uh, I'll finish this up tomorrow I'll throw some pictures from the uh, uh, from both cameras up there and, and we can take a look at them together and see if uh, see if I can learn anything this is something I do about once a year I wish I did it more often by the way if you, I don't know if you watched my last video but I am on a roll bumping into nice people two people came out here to um, uh, to see what I was up to I imagine it was a, a, a pair of young lovers and uh, they stopped and they were terribly friendly came over and were, were chatting with me uh, about what I was doing and um, the young lady said that, that she wanted to come out here to see if she could see a shooting star because she'd never seen a shooting star and I hadn't seen any this evening either except two minutes after she said that one of the most spectacular meteors uh, I've seen uh, in ages came streaking across the sky right over our heads so it was um, it, it was it was a special evening I'm glad I came out here I know I know those two are glad they came out here uh, but anyway I'll see you in the morning and we'll see what these pictures look like go get some sleep you look exhausted thank you I will good night well I finally made it home uh, quite late it was um, one or two o'clock in the morning before I got back I ran into a, a couple of issues uh, there at the the end of the evening that I didn't appreciate till I looked at the photographs this morning the first thing was as the uh, evening went on my lenses uh, were were getting a fine film on them because as the temperature dropped the humidity was horrendous as it usually is and uh, I wasn't aware that the the lenses were fogging like that so that was one disappointment uh, I should have known better I usually uh, I usually will have a microfiber cloth and I'll just keep them clean that way but last night I forgot to carry one with me and really didn't notice that, that they were getting a bit fogged up uh, the other thing was even though it looked pretty dark out there um, it wasn't nearly dark enough 
uh, the uh, the city on the other side of the bay doesn't look like much um, doesn't look like much if you're over there to be honest but uh, at night there was a a faint glow coming from the direction of the Milky Way and as the evening went on and the uh, planet rotated I got closer and closer to being dead in line with uh, with that light and with 25 30 second exposures of course before too long there was just a lot of extra light in the pictures and the more light there is the less the, the less you can see. Anyway, I'm going to show you the pictures that I did take and I thought I'd very, very briefly touch on, on how to edit them. I'll probably do a proper uh, astrophotography editing in Lightroom thing at some point, but really the trick is uh, all I generally do is increase the contrast in the photograph. Uh, I do it in a couple of different ways. I bump the contrast slider up uh, and then I add highlights and drop the, uh, the shadows a little. I also add some whites and drop the, uh, the blacks just to kind of create that, that separation and it really makes the stars pop. The other thing I do is uh, in the curve, uh, I go to make a curve adjustment and just again very, very minimally bump up the, the uh, highlights and drop the shadows a little bit. That's about all I do, uh, other than fiddle with the colors just a little bit, but these aren't good Milky Way pictures after all. Um, and I think, I've, I think I've done as much as I possibly could. There was one of these images where I had the, the foresight to go ahead and um, shoot uh, a, a couple of uh, much faster shutter release shots of the foreground and I took them over into to, um, Photoshop and uh, combined those images. So we've got a couple of images that have a, a not overexposed foreground and um, a, you know, a decent look at the stars. The other problem was there were two massive halogen uh, parking lot lights on in the parking lot. And no matter, there was nowhere I could get away from that. And I think there was some light leakage uh, into my viewfinder at some point. Anyway, it was great fun. I hope you learned something uh, from it uh, in that uh, last minute dash out to the dark place. But uh, uh, anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll, uh, I'll be back with something more organized uh, in a few days. But until then... Uh, check out the website, alanwallsphotography.com. A lot of stuff going on, lots of uh, new blog posts, lots of videos, uh, so check that out. And I will be back with you in just a few days. Thank you very much, everybody who's subscribed to the channel. That's a thumbs up. Well done. Appreciate it. And I'll see you again in a few days. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.